This is an electric hovercraft that I've built on the past couple of months. It couldn't quite lift a person, but in today's video, that's all about to change because we're going to add 3D printed propellers and not only will I be riding it, it will be really fast too. So here we go, enjoy the video. Okay, first off, we need some protection from the human blender because this just ain't gonna do it. So I used a sheet of 8mm plywood and painted it black. But as you can see in this shot, we are also 3D printing the compression propellers and here's why. Okay, I can't believe I'm saying this, but this is part 2 of the sketchiest hovercraft you'll ever see on YouTube. If you haven't seen part 1, when we build this, you may want to go watch it for all of this to make sense. But in today's video, we're adding two of these massive 3D printed fans in order to support all the weight that we've added. So we'll add two of these massive fans in each corner to support all the weight. So just like a lot of you commented, this type of 3D printed EDF style of propeller should be a lot more efficient contrary to this type of large slow swinging propeller. We are however going to use the same electric motors for these EDF fans. And it's not optimal, but hopefully it will work. As you can see, I've already installed one and we tested it live on stream and it seems to work really well. These two should be a lot better at building up a static pressure inside the skirt and that's what we're looking for. So let's pop it in. At this point both propellers were in place and it was finally time to test it but I immediately found a problem with the current setup. Look at the plastic, it's not pressurized. It did in fact still work but I had to use way more throttle to keep it hovering. But I think what happened here was that air was allowed to escape from the carbon propeller inlet which rendered the new EDF propellers pretty much useless as they couldn't build up a pressure. Which was super clear when the pressure managed to tear the stapled plastic after I plugged it. It's tremendously counterintuitive, but the two fans that we've added on each side actually made it worse. And here's my best theory why. We don't have a whole lot of weight up front, but we have a lot of weight in the rear, just like Kim Kardashian. And the result of the uneven weight distribution is that air can escape from the front end as it lifts up prematurely. I'm not even gonna make a joke about that. These two batteries are 20 kilograms and it leveled it perfectly, but it didn't really help with the hover ability. Yes, that's the word. So in a desperate attempt, I cut away a part of the plywood that was still blocking the propeller thrust. But an even more desperate attempt was actually made. Jesus, that's so stable. I mean, there's, there is no way that's gonna fail. I moved my weight forward by sitting above the propeller. Jesus, this guy must have a death wish. All it did though was disturbing the air for the propeller, which you can clearly tell by the noise. No, it's, it's struggling right there. And it increased the chance of a human blending, so not a good combo. Eventually, I just went for it. I knew I had to fix it somehow, which meant removing the front motor mount. Okay, I guess we're ready to start all over again. I've added standoffs, I've built this propeller inlet cover, and uh, it doesn't look as pretty as it was before, but I have 3D printed a third EDF style propeller. We'll try it, we'll add the motor, and see if we can get this to fly, finally. Well, we got the motor mount, now we just need to get the motor off and I may have used wood glue at one point, so... I got the third motor installed and I was surprised to see that it actually worked. That's it! Woo! 
I then repainted the thing in a brighter red and installed prop guards. I'm not saying it's good, but it is something. Dude, I can't make this up. It's Antarctica level of snow outside. We don't give a fuck. All three guards on, that's really just to minimize the chance of death. Now, here's something pretty interesting I didn't really plan for, but we have four motors and I just so happen to have eight batteries. So we're running one pair of batteries to each motor. The red color, way better. Looks like something Santa would ride in. But here we go. This is going to be the very first test of the fully electric hovercraft. Let's take it outside. After that crash, we broke not one, but two switches. Also, you can see the electronic circuits, but it still works. Basically, it just went full throttle. I should have known it did the same thing on this boat. I've lost all control. The boat is out there. The failsafe for this controller was active. It just didn't engage. So I tried to connect my DX6i from 2009, but it just wouldn't talk to the electric speed controllers, which is super weird. So. I guess we're back to this one. Okay, as you know, for the past year, I've sent numerous files to PCBWay in order to be either CNC'd or metal 3D printed. All you do is upload your file and it will provide you with a plethora of options in regards to materials to choose from. PCBWay also offers PCB manufacturing and with their instant quote feature, you'll get the pricing up front. My experience is that you'll have your new part just a week after placing the order, so check them out in the description below. Okay, back to the video. Correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think it's pretty safe to say that wasn't the smartest. It was near impossible standing on this thing, so Safe It's Cell makes a comeback. I'll route the electricals all the way up front, so we'll add more weight with the batteries together with the Safe It's Cell, which is great. Uh, also, the primary reason is that I can shut this death machine off. So I extended all the cables to reach here and put the safety cockpit in place. Not even gonna say anything, just skip to the part where I drive this thing. I can't really drive around, but what's left, but then just to take it to an open field. We're doing that next, so here we go. A frozen lake, I couldn't think of anything better than an entire lake for ourselves, so let's rip it. But also, here's how I got it here. You know, this is pretty insane, but here are all the batteries. It's a pretty good chunk of batteries, but I don't have enough powerful chargers to charge them in like an hour. It takes four. And so we have six minutes. That's, that's it. That's the runtime. Yeah. I'm all alone out here, but I'll try to get the drone up and get some footage for you guys. But it might be a little sketchy driving both of them at the same time, but I'll do my best. All right, here we go.
Fucking fake. But it was pretty sick to see a vehicle this size leave no trail behind. And realistically, it probably reached 30 to 40 kilometers an hour, which I gotta be pretty happy with. There is an... There is surprisingly a small amount of snow inside the skirt considering how much leaves we were able to scoop up last time. However, we got some transportation damages that we have to resolve. So let's do that next. Oh, well, that won't work. We want to go out on that field and some trees are blocking our way, so... This field is pretty rough, so let's see how it goes. It must have something to do with how deep the snow is. I'm just not getting any lift. That's weird. You know, good thing is it's still radio controlled. so good that's so good i wouldn't normally do this unless i was super hyped about my next project this is the inspector gadget anti-gravity device which utilizes the same electric motors that i have on the hovercraft and i will strap them to my back and have a potentiometer to adjust the throttle to simulate the gravity on the different planets. So for example, on Mars, it's only 38% of Earth's gravity, which means I only weigh 30 kilograms. These motors will then have to lift the bulk of my weight to simulate Mars's gravity. I'm sure you have seen the astronauts kind of jump around on the moon, and that's what I want to simulate. And that's the idea of this entire project. We'll be building the Inspector Gadget anti-gravity device live on stream. So if you want to follow that build, check it out in the description below. And thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I will see you again very soon. Have an awesome day. Bye.